This is Cameron Chai from Azon, bringing you another episode of Azon.com TV. And today we're speaking to Simon Milner from Panalytical. And he's going to tell us about their Epsilon 3 XL XRF system. Hey, good morning, Cameron. Um, here we have a uh, brand new to Panalytical's uh, product portfolio. Uh, launched uh, a week ago. This is the first um, public uh, display of this unit. Um, it's an energy dispersive uh, spectrometer um, and one of a range of two. Um, the system is designed to uh, analyze a variety of materials um, from uh, a variety of different industries, for example, cement, uh, petrochemicals, mining, uh, and po uh, polymers and plastics. Um, the system is, um, as you can see, easily opened. It has a sample carousel, so you can mount a number of samples. Um, and enable, which enables you to do uh, unattended batch analysis. The types of samples that we can accommodate, if you can see here, for example, this is a fused glass bead of cement. The sample would be placed into the holder like so, loaded into the instrument. The system is completely safe. It is uh, rated to the latest uh, standard of radiation safety. Um, the system is then, the, the, the sample can then be analyzed and a typical spectrum which you would generate from such a fused glass bead would be something like this. And on this screen here you can see the, um, the spectrum of the cement bead and you can see here the typical components, aluminium, silica, sulfur and of course the calcium peak uh, from cement. One of the points to note here is the excellent resolution and symmetry of the peaks which makes the uh, data reduction uh, a very simple process. Now we've talked about uh, standard samples. One of the other possibilities with the Epsilon 3 XL is to measure larger samples which are not mounted. In this case we remove the sample carousel like so. It's a very simple me mechanism. We can rotate the sample spinner mechanism out of the way like so and if I was for example to take my mobile phone I could place it over the measuring position like so close the lid and then I would be able to do analyses of elements which are perhaps um, of relevance to the uh, ROS directive cadmium, lead, bromine. Okay, and it can obviously do liquid samples, uh, loose powder samples and all that type of thing? That's quite correct, yes, as you see here we have a, uh, a, a cup which we would generate for making liquid, uh, for, for analyzing liquid samples. And this, again, would just fit into the carousel, like so. Place the carousel, replace the carousel, place the liquid cup in the sample holder, close, and then you can analyze. And what's the difference between this type of instrument, a small bench top unit, and uh, a larger standalone type instrument as far as resolution and accuracy is concerned? Well, um, the, the throughput of the bench top systems tends to be uh, lower, okay? Um, but we have, um, we have made great strides in the performance of these bench top systems such that they are actually challenging some of the, performance, the performances of some of the larger um, wavelength dispersive floor standing systems. Um, it does not outperform our Axios range of spectrometers, which you can also see on our website, um, but it has made great strides in the last, or this technology has made great strides in the last uh, 15 to 20 years. So the accuracy of this type of machine is, is, is almost comparable, but at a much lower price point? That's correct, yes. So it's, it's, it's quite an efficient, uh, rather effective way of uh, analysis, particularly when you only have a few samples per day. Yeah? And how does it go with light elements? Um, yeah, that's one of the strengths of this, this baby. Um, the, if we see here the periodic table, you can see here, uh, traditionally uh, benchtop systems like this would normally cover the range from sodium through the periodic table to uranium. That is a sort of standard uh, range of, of, of elements which um, are normally analyzed by this thing. But because of the se sensitivity of the system, we can actually analyze this much lighter element, fluorine. Okay, and who typically uses this type of instrument? What's, what's your target uh, market for this? Target market, well, 
it's a kind. It, it's basically a can. What we would call a can-do-all instrument. So it's it's relevant f for many different types of industries, but principally cement, the cement industry, uh, certain mining applications, um, soil and contaminated land type applications, and um, applications in the petrochemical industry like sulfur in oil or wear metals in oil or um, or perhaps polymers and plastics. Here we have a, a piece of plastic here. And so is it more suited though to quality control type applications rather than re like high-end research I suppose? Yes, it's definitely more of a production control type uh, instrument. All right, then, Simon, if anybody wants more information on the Epsilon 3 and the sister instrument, they can go to your to website? To our website, yes, www.panalytical.com. And uh, I invite people to come and have to take a look. All right, Simon, thanks very much for telling us about the new Epsilon 3 XL system. Thank you, Kevin.